And that all comes out too. When you're, when you're sitting for long stretches like this, everything about yourself that you thought you were hiding eventually comes out. You think going to the hairdresser is bad? Sit under a needle for hour after hour and see if all your innermost thoughts don't eventually work their way to the surface. And I'll tell you what, that's, that's part of, again, where the, where the name of the shop came from. You know what I mean? Like, I do think that tattooing somebody, the relationship that you have to develop between client and artist, sometimes can be more intimate than some of your personal relationships. Because, you know, if it's just sex, you can base base that on just a physical sensation and you go see each other until you get on each other's nerves and you split. You start talking about, you know, doing something that's going to last somebody for a lifetime. I mean, let's face it, tattoos last longer than most marriages do nowadays. So, you know, you're, you're really, it's an investment in yourself when you come in to get it done. And you're really kind of investing your hopes in the artist that's tattooing you because Whatever they put on you, you're kind of you're kind of stuck with that, you know. And so, if you haven't really done your research and haven't really thought it through, you could be scheduling yourself for some severe disappointment if it doesn't turn out right. On the flip side of the coin, if you do go through that and you do kind of develop that understanding, that rapport, that that sort of, you know, each person knows how the other one thinks and what they want and how they need in order for this to develop itself out then every piece that hits your body could be a masterpiece. It just depends on, you know, depends on what ends up developing between the, the client and the, the artist. So, I mean, you see what I'm saying? We've been on this for a little over a half hour and it just looks like, well, that's all you got done? Yeah. But truthfully, that's more than most people's whole tattoo. You know, you get a little tribal lower back piece or whatever. Hi. <laughs> what am I saying? It's actually 31 minutes and 32 minutes. Getting back to that kind of philosophy as to what I think that relationship between client and uh, an artist should be. I think I took a lot of that from, from Toomey Stewart, you know. I had already been tattooing, tattoo party style with homemade machines and stuff for a few years before I was able to get into an apprenticeship. And I can remember the very first day that I walked in there and he was looking at some homemade stuff that I put on my dad and whatever. And the reason I even knew that I was going to be an apprentice was because he looked at me and he said, whatever it is you think you know about tattooing, forget about it because you don't know shit. <laughs> Grab that broom. <laughs> and that was my intro. And what he really was trying to tell me was that sort of crunch him out kind of mentality was not what he was teaching me. He was trying to teach, I don't know if he's trying to teach because I don't know if you can teach that. I think he was trying to draw out of me the love of the art as opposed to just the business of the art. Mm -hmm. And I think those lessons have still stuck around with me. I'm what, 36 now? I was 17 then. So we're looking at, you know, a good 20 years of, of those lessons still sticking with me. Well, that pays when you're your own boss. Even at that, if I was doing contracting work or something like that, you know, you get a little contract for some landscaping or something and you say something politically incorrect and you still get fired. They just hire another contractor. And I've seen it because there's a lot of contractors that come in and get work and they're still really concerned about where they place it and, you know, what subject matter it is because, you know, they go in to put bids in on a job. They still got to look or act a certain way in order to, you know, they could be the better one with the better price and if they don't, fit the part or, or make that person feel comfortable, they still lose out. Not that it doesn't happen in here, it's just fortunate that, you know, as artists we're kind of expected to be thrown off a little bit. I think when you're an artist they call it eccentric. Everybody else is just thrown off. <laughs> and it sounds cliche, but going through what you have to go through to get your tattoo, I feel like does bond you to it a little more than something that you didn't really have to put any work in to get, you know? I think that's true of anything. I think it's true of a tattoo, you know, to do a good job at something, a relationship. If you really put your all into it and then it culminated in the result that you were looking for, I think you're, you're, you're much happier with that than something that just came so easy and you really didn't have to, really didn't have to think too much about it or put too much of yourself into it to make it happen. You'll find a lot of tattoo artists, they can be great tattooists and have crappy work on them because everybody, you know, they first get into the industry and they kind of break in and they're just like, wow, I'm in a shop. 
I can get tattooed whenever I want. Slow right now, here, put this on me. Let's do this, let's do that. And they look up and it's just like they're covered with stuff. And none of the stuff is necessarily planned out. And even if each individual piece is good as a collection, a lot of times it doesn't quite look all that great. Well, I'm, I guess I'm glad I, I did something like this. Now I can't. It's just hmm. At least not on your back. All right, so that puts yeah. us at the, at the hour-ish cigarette break. Yeah, 55 minutes to be exact. Alrighty, back for hour two on this session. We're gonna go in and do a little bit of the branch work. We'll actually get some textures started on this before we were just kind of solid, you know, kind of shading. Go in now and try to create some interest with the black and some of the branch work. We'll go knock out what we can. Much bigger commitment than most people think that it is to get, you know, large work. Large work that's not a series of smaller tattoos puzzle piece together over time. Because you get a series of small tattoos, you get one and then it's done. You don't really have to come back. There's no commitment, that there's no requirement that you come back and continue it. If you're doing a piece that is definitely not finished until it's finished, then you're stuck coming back over and over again until it's done. And some people really can't, can't do that. What I'm gonna end up doing is recreating the feel. Recreating what it feels like to look at it as opposed to stroke for stroke what you see on the page. But really when you look at the, the picture itself, the original, it's not overly busy. Like every every part has its place and you can really see each individual aspect of what's going on in the tattoo. And I think that, that you know, it gives you a nice balance between activity and simplicity. Sometimes you just get extremely active, especially when you're talking about traditional Asian pieces. There, there's a lot of activity, a lot of things going on, a lot of different specific things that you can kind of identify and name off and whatever. And this one seemed to, to be a little bit more, uh, not necessarily simple because it's, it's still definitely put together in such a way that there's a lot of things going on. But I think it was easier for my brain to follow it when I saw it than it would be on maybe some other stuff that you see. You know, yeah. typical dragon koi fish combinations and stuff that a lot of waves and wind bars and, you know, cherry blossoms falling off of stuff. And, you know, the, the, the stuff you normally see. You can see over the the past just a little while that we've been back into this session, how much more it looks like we've accomplished in the first hour of it. You know, a lot of people kind of think that you look do something solid black, you know, like tribal or just solid black that we filled in here is that it's really easy. And I guess technically it's not difficult. What it is, however, is time consuming. And if you're really gonna do it right, you really gotta take the time and push that black in there until you're really densely saturated in that section of skin. And so, you know, it doesn't look like you make as much progress sometimes as you could. Now we're on a nice little roll because, you know, we're adding texture. So it's more about the techniques themselves to create the effects that we're looking for. And those effects in this particular piece, more than even some others, I think are extremely important. It's a huge tattoo. And I mean, obviously just liking what the piece looks like is one thing. When I'm looking at it from an artistic standpoint as a tattooist, you know, we want to make it fit the body that it's on. And this piece basically has exactly the same type of a, a feel as her body has, you know what I mean? Like it's an extremely powerful piece when you look at it. It's really dense, you know what I mean? There's a lot of extreme like darkness in some regions and whatnot. So it's really powerful, but at the same time, if you look at it the way it's put together is also extremely delicate. So if you relate that to you know how we're, the feel that we're trying to get on her, her body is extremely powerful but extremely delicate at the same time. And so if you don't capture both of those things in the tattoo, then what you can end up doing instead of enhancing her natural strengths, you know what I mean? You could actually start bringing out something that she might consider flaws or whatever. So you want to make sure that you're 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 enhancing 
the parts of a person's body that you want to put forward and kind of taking attention away from the parts that you may not want to see so much. Well, we're about seven or eight minutes away from o'clock anyway, which is when I had planned on breaking again. So. Well, you were a little more prepared for this than you were the last time. I don't think you kind of really understood or grasped what you were getting into on that first sitting. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> You're like, this is just the outline? <laughs> I was like, Jesus Christ, oh my God, I'm kicking myself. Somebody's gonna be ready for a nap. That's what I always do, dude. When I go in and get a long session done, I'll never make plans for some shit I'm going to do afterwards because all I want to do when I get done getting tattoos is go home and take a nap. You'll hear people come in the shop, yeah, you know, when you get this done and I head out to the club and we're going to do this and do that and you think I should cover it while I'm out dancing and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I sound good and everything, but... You okay? No. I'm not going to be doing a whole bunch of dancing after getting tattooed. I'm going to be snoring. Yeah, hold on. You need to check on her. Make sure she's okay. She's all right. That's, that's, you can't have that much compassion while you're tattooing or you'll never get anything done. Like, unfortunately, that's really the way it works. It's like a nurse. If she's really worried about whether or not it hurts when she draws blood, she'll never get any blood drawn. So as long as she's sitting, I'm tattooing. She passes out, then we have to go ahead and get her to wake up and everything. And... Once she's alert again, right back in the saddle until it's, you know, until the session's over. It's amazing how a nice, soft, name brand bounty paper towel starts to feel like sandpaper after a couple hours. So yeah, it actually looks like it's falling together a little bit. You can at least start to see what we're trying to do anyway. Up through here, like I said, I left a little little extra negative space that I'm going to try and contour in when we start adding some of the color to give it just a little bit more dimension but still maintain that darkness that's kind of the signature of the piece. A little more separation in between feathers that I may go in and do some some pretty heavy highlighting just to, to pop those out a little bit but other than that I mean what well, we got these feathers down here and then the dark dark black and the birds are pretty much done. Still got to come through and do all the black throughout the branches and whatnot. So we still got a ways to go, but all in all, it was a pretty good session as far as, you know, looking like we made some accomplishments.